have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. So, welcome back to the lab. This is part two on building the Schlenk line. I know that first one was a little long to get into it, but I got into it. So I've got most of the parts here, the plumbing for the vacuum and some of the attachments to hold the glassware. And I think what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to finish assembling this thing and finish this video about it. So we're gonna work on the vac, um, possibly hook up some of the other stuff, put the grease on the fittings, I think the only thing I don't have, we don't have these valves. I may wait to publish this video until I have those. Um, we've got a heating element, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. So I think we're just gonna sort of go through it, see how this video goes and uh, yeah, sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is actually work on the vacuum system and just get that done. So here's the vac line. This has this type of flange on it. Um, I forgot the type of flange. I forgot what it's actually called. A QF flange. Oh, focus there. Focus. You can do it. So this is from the uh, Kurt J. Lester. A QF 25. That's this side. KF 25. And then this side is a KF 16. And um, these have these clamps and seals. So the seal goes in here. Clamp goes on the outside. I'll show you what it looks like on the vacuum line. So it basically looks like that. And then on the back side of this pipe, it's hard to get to. All right, I'm going to make it so we can attach it right here. And then this also is for this oven, so we want to make it dual purpose. So when we get to it, I'll show you how it goes. This side actually needs to be attached to this glass with a clamp. Now this hose is, uh, I think it's PVC but it is lined with a metal spring so that it can't collapse because this this will be pulling a vacuum so if you have a hose that's weak or not rated for vacuum it will actually collapse which is a problem now the other hose that we have for this particular project which is what you normally see on vacuum systems like this this is a rubber hose this does not have any insert um, and i've seen this used on most most systems however I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this hose, I think, all the way back to the line because it'll actually be a little easier to work with. That rubber hose is really hard to work with. So, there you go. Okay, so I forgot to mention one more thing, two more things. That is, one, I replaced the light. That original light was designed for a hazardous location, along with this entire hood, actually. So, uh, we're not using it in that environment, so it's okay to put the light in there like I got it. So, I just put a regular regular light in there nothing fancy <clears throat> and i also built this this is just a stainless steel plate that i had laying around made a uh, rod tack welded it on there and put a clamp on it so i'm going to make up a few more of these i want to make sure this one's going to work first so this will be what i use to hold my my doer okay so there you go forgot to say that uh, also, I just added this clamp up here, so you can see it's a bit tight, but that holds this guy, so now I don't have to have that support under there. So, anyway, I had to mention those things. That's, that's from what I did from last time. Yep! Alright, so I'm going to show you how these flanges fit together. This is a metal insert with a O-ring. I think that's Viton. Then it just fits in here like this. The other side fits in here like this. And this clamp, all it does is just clamp the two together and squash that ring. It's a very simple, nice, quick, uh, quick change system. And then you can crank this guy down with a proper tool. That's it. It's pretty simple. All right, guys. So I want to drill a hole for the vacuum line to come out right here. I think that'll be a good choice to have it all right here. So what I'm going to actually be doing is drilling a hole with a drill bit and then using what they call a knockout punch 
okay, to actually put the hole in there. So some of you have never seen such a thing. And so I thought I would demonstrate how this works. This is the part that has the cutting edge on it. I think this is the die part. This is the punch part. Could be wrong. So this threads on there, okay? And then as these compress together, it starts to cut a point there on both sides and it works its way to the middle until it cuts all the way through. So you only have to drill a hole a little bit bigger than whatever this bolt here is. And then you just turn this and slowly compress them together and pop it out. So I figured some of you have never seen such a thing, so I'm going to show you. First things first, we're going to drill a hole. So I'm going to drill it about right here. I could use a punch for this, but we'll stick with this. Oh, what a mess. All right, so we drilled a hole. Next thing we're going to do is use the punch. Now, the highly most important thing is make sure you put oil, mainly actually on the thread, but you can put a little bit on the cutter if you really want to. Okay, so what you're going to do is this piece goes on one side, this piece goes on the other side. So we're going to put this here so I can get to it easily, and this one out here. All right, so let me set up the camera on the outside so you can actually see that thing cut. Here we go. And that's how that's done. It is just that simple. So because there's a, a sharp point and a you know, where it starts to work its way down. You don't have all that shear in one place to punch a hole. You work from a, to a point and you work your way down. So, look how the paint, paint flickering off. Easy as pie. In case you're wondering, I am going to be using this, which is upside down. This is Russ's. This is Panduit um, edge covering that I got from uh, Actually, believe it or not, I bought this at a yard sale. So it's a whole roll. Official pan to it. It's good stuff. This is what we're going to put on that edge. So we don't have a sharp edge. All right, there you go. So it just fits on that edge. Pop it on there. Now we don't have a sharp edge. Perfect. So here we are. I've put that clamp in, which I've mentioned earlier. I've put on the vacuum line. Strapped it to this bar. Out the hole behind everything down here and I managed to just go ahead and stick it right in instead of to this pipe it's kind of annoying so we'll just plug it right in here with those same connect connectors so this is a bigger connector down to a slightly smaller one and then we got our vac line all complete time to move on to the next thing we got these valves in I think I'm gonna put those in right now let's check it out before we move on to those valves I wanted to show you these clamps so I had a set of these clamps in my collection of things, and so I went ahead and ordered some more. And these are A, B, A clamps. All right, these are a special type of clamp, as in they don't have the, the ribs on them, kind of like this clamp. They have a regular, you know, insert in there, and that evenly compresses the hose without making sure you don't cut it. So this actually has an insert in it, which you can see, which is the same style. The old original hose clamps without the inside tabs there are really, really annoying and not a good thing to use. So try to find these. They're a little bit more expensive, but on any application, they're usually going to be better. They don't cut into that hose. Yeah, I guess you'd like to see them. There they are. That one and that one. There's one on the top that's hard to see. And these over here. They work really well. There is the valve assembly. So this is actually for this lab hood, designed for it. So you got the valve, the knob, fitting to hold the insert gas coming in, the barbed fitting that you put on the inside of the hood, and then the stickers, and then the gas line going out. So basically, I've taken the panel off here, and I've went ahead and took in the caps out so we'll assemble this thing and see how it goes not quite sure okay I got this piece in here 
I got this piece in here, which is the valve and the outlet. So the incoming gas goes here, and then we're supposed to put the outgoing gas, which goes to our lab hood here. And as you can see, this is the tube they sent me. They say put it in here, and then put it in there. But look, you know, a couple of problems, but mainly the fact that it's too short in theory to even work. So if I put it in here, you can see I have to really do some finagling. So I'm going to re-bend this slightly just enough to make sure it's it's in here far enough. But I don't know. I'm following directions specified exactly as they say. Okay. Well, if I put it in here like they specify, the pipe is not long enough. So I'm going to have to re-bend this corner, make it a little longer. I've already straightened it so it's as best as it can be. But, uh, it's kind of silly. For as much money as this costs, this should just fit. Oh well. I guess that's called... Uh, what is that called? I forgot what that's called. Something. I gotta think. Let me think. What's that called? Oh yeah. Field modifications. <laughs> okay. I got the second one in. Now, <laughs> once again, Back to this silly pipe thing. The pipe's long enough, but look, it's bent the wrong way. So in theory, this one would fit here perfect. Like, perfect. Actually, it's a little long, but that's fine. It's pretty pretty well perfect. But that's not, that's not how it works. These three holes are specific for these three valves. Anyway, I'm kind of disappointed, but hey, I don't mind modifying things myself. It's just, this, this is a kit. This should be right. Ah, yeah, well, enough complaining. Let's get it done. Well, apparently they did this one the same way. Bent the wrong way, so we'll fix it. It does not look nice, but it's functional. That's what matters. Professional. Check it out. Nice. So we got argon, gas, and air. And then we can change this one if I don't want air. But I originally have nitrogen and argon, but I think we're only going to use argon, most likely. So, anyway, and then the gas. So the gas one, you know, we pre-ordered these for what we wanted. And the gas one actually came with a copper tube, where the other ones came with, uh, excuse me, they came with a brass tube, where the other ones came with copper. So anyway, I had to cut off a little bit of this guy and this guy. And like I said, this one, I was stretching it. So I'd rather them be long and cut them than be too short. But this is a standard stamped system. So it, you'd think the pipes would be a little bit better but apparently these are hand bent or something they've got markings on them so they're they're hand bent so anyway moving on to the next step looks nice though mic check welcome back boys and girls okay so here we are we've got all this plumbed i managed to put different fittings here instead of the compression fitting i needed that compression fitting to get this to work out right because this gas line's different but the air incoming and the argon incoming I've just plumbed them up, plumbed them out. This is the argon right here. And then I'm just going to put a T fitting and connect it right there. So that's the pipe right there. I'm going to connect it to our airline. So I can still cut it off. I also can cut the gas off. I always leave those off unless I'm in here. And then, uh, then I can control them here. The air, I guess, won't be regulated unless I add a second regulator, which I should probably do. And I don't have one with me, so I guess I'll order one. And then this actually is going to go to the scrubbing system, so it'll be either up here or somewhere. So we've got an oxygen, or a, yeah, an oxygen scrubber. No, actually, that's a moisture scrubber. And then the oxygen scrubber is not here yet. We'll, we'll plumb it over to there. So I'll put this panel back on, but that looks really nice. I'm, I'm very pleasantly pleased with how this turned out so far. All right, so briefly I want to talk about the clamping mechanisms that I have acquired. There's many, many, many different types and hooks and all sorts of things, but I have here some of the basic clamps. Actually, these are the same. So the clamping mechanisms themselves are all different kinds. These are three finger. These are just a single clamp. And the difference between these two, which are both with their, you know, they're both of them are three finger. It's basically the fact that this is fixed. So this point is fixed and you always set your part up against here and then it always clamps this way because that's how this one works. However, 
in this case you can actually bring in this one so far and then this one and so you can actually move this where you want it which is nice when this is fixed uh, and then this one's the same way as the first one where this is solid and this is different these don't hold as well but they work fine for certain things these three fingers seem to work a little better uh, just because there's a single point where this is has to be nice and flat and perfect and then to attach the back I'm actually just using the same things I used on the structured lattice these particular ones have uh, I can't use that one in that one, huh? That's not gonna work. It's not, it won't go down far enough. So apparently these don't thread down far enough, but these do. These are the, the ones you use with Allen wrenches, so I'll have to do something different with those. But basically, I'm gonna use these same adapters. I could stick it in the middle, or I could stick it in the side, and mount it wherever I wanted. So, so I show you the difference between these. You have made it inside the lab hood. So here's what we got. We have here the vacuum or negative pressure, <laughs> low pressure vacuum side uh, sensor. So this is a uh, Granville Phillips 275 mini Convectron. Convectron. It's got the digital display on it so we can see it here. And then it has a bunch of data out but I'm not going to use that for this system and I want to make this modular so I can plug this to anything else I want so I've welded up this little bracket right here which I can't pull the cord any further and I think what I'm going to do is just mount this right here like here yeah and then it'll always be in here because what we want to do is make sure our vacuum side isn't leaking so if we cap the system off we can check it so it's just a verification because if we get oxygen in this system and it gets in the cold trap, it could, ex could potentially explode. 